And I've been going to inform the Congo for about 10 years now, and I go across to a couple of times a year. I went to the last elections as an observer along with a number of my colleagues. Um, and actually, the effect the last time of simply having an election across places huge in the Congo covered mainly in a tropical rainforest was a pretty remarkable actually. It was perfect, it was a long way from perfect. Uh, but it was pretty remarkable with the turnout up towards 70%. Uh, and it was quite a thing to see folk going and voting in very remote polling stations. We call them polling stations. We've got this idea in our minds of going on to bring this over to the UK, some of us anyway. Um, when you see it on the ground, it's quite remarkable to have polling stations in the middle of nowhere where five or six people will be cast a vote. And it was all run pretty well by Mr. Marlon Marlon, who did a really good job. It was very well funded by the international community. This time the challenges are quite different. The DRC itself is meeting about 60% of the costs, and that's really substantial for a country. Like the DRC, um, the Electoral Commission have had its issues. Some people have initially said the links between the Commission uh, and the President were too close. And, and, and there were causes uh, or question marks around its, its independence in that sense. But since then, they seem to have done a reasonably good job of getting on with it. The, the registration isn't complete. Uh, but I think when it comes to the election itself, and I hope it will run on the 20th of November, um, I hope that there's a proper contest that people make every effort. The last election, one very significant party didn't play, and I think it was a mistake <coughs> that Mr. Chisikini's BDPS didn't uh, take part. I think some of them were recognised. I think they recognised very quickly afterwards it was a mistake, actually. And there was a large vacuum, and into that vacuum, uh, you know, came a number of unexpected consequences, um, not least um, events after the election, where everybody was not entirely happy. But actually, the election was run pretty well last time. And it's a mistake, I think, to argue in advance that whatever happens, it's going to be illegitimate. I think the best thing you can do is make a big effort, campaign properly. If there are flaws in the election process, by all means, point them out. But in fact, any semblance of a sound democratic election in the Congo is a truly remarkable thing. But it has, as I think one of uh, the questioners I mentioned earlier, it has to be accompanied by <coughs> civic development, strong institutions that bring and hold the country to account. And at the moment, in the last five years, when we look back, it's hard to say that the degree of progress has been what we would have expected when we looked in 2006. Progress has been quite slow. But nevertheless, there has been, if you ask the World Bank uh, and the IMF, particularly the World Bank, they'll say there has been you know, 6 or 7% growth from a very low base. They'll say that quite a lot of the human rights indicators are quite good, in spite of the fact, of course, that the government doesn't control that much of the country in respect of law and order. Uh, and generally speaking, not everybody has got everything the negative to say. There's some good things to be said about progress, but it has been slow. And the significant thing about the election this year, and I hope they happen this year, is that they have to mark a very significant change where there's a proper buy-in from all parts of society. And you can't just win an election by getting enough people around you and railroading it through at the right time. You know, there's issues around the constitution but it's been legitimately changed by a sovereign state six or eight months ago. So, you know, we accept that, and that's the right of the DRC. So I think we can expect an election, I hope we can expect an election this year. Um, I hope not only will it produce a democratic elected president, but it will presage a period of, uh, if you like, a higher degree of, of a proper reflection of the suffrage of the people who are actually voting in the process. There will be quite high turnout, I'm no, I'm no, I have no doubt about it. Um, but that really produces a responsibility on the part of whoever's elected. And I have no interest whatever in whoever's elected in the Congo. That's entirely a matter for the Congolese people. Although, of course, people in the UK have, from the strong Congolese background, would expect to have an opinion, like any diaspora would. But in the end, it's entirely a matter for the Congolese people. And it would be a mistake for anyone to get on one side or the other if they're in my position. The crucial thing is that the whole thing acts as a watershed and that beyond these elections we expect to see proper civic institutions challenging government just like we do in the UK. I can see the advantage of not having such a challenging press in the UK. <laughs> actually, I mean, actually, I'll take it all back. It's better to have it. The truth of the matter is actually the Congo has a nascent um, emerging journalistic class actually and in other parts of Africa it's very difficult for them to be properly held. The Congo actually has the potential for that to happen properly, uh, but it takes resources, it takes time, and it takes encouragement by countries like the UK. And it is certainly true that the UK, under the last government, under this government, 
have been paying very close attention to that in the DRC and elsewhere. So I can claim just conclude by thanking you for coming on tonight um, and I wish the campaign that well. It's not in the campaign. It says that what it does what it says in the John the and that's a super thing. And I'm very glad to have uh, been given the chance to uh, have a small role tonight and I, and I do wish the campaign well. Uh,